Setting up your transportation layout in a game like Satisfactory is a huge commitment and can be a difficult experience if you don't follow the layout you start with. A few minutes of planning can go a long way when it comes to success or failure down the road. To help you with this, today I will be going over transportation logistics to include your train hub or hubs and your general bus design. Before we begin, my goal is to share tips, approaches, and perspectives that are focused on modular, efficient, and organic expansion when building bases or factories in the games that you play. Much of my technique and perspective has been from experiencing a lot of titles like Satisfactory, but when I have to plan too much, I lose the fun factor. Or, this occurs more often, friends will say the game seems too complicated, or they don't want to work while playing a game. I get it. It turns a lot of gamers off. That's why I started my channel, to provide logical content from an industrial perspective while still checking for sanity and fun. I don't blame people one bit for being overwhelmed, either at early game or if they make it to the end game and lose focus on what to do next. I don't want to print out a spreadsheet receipt that I duplicate in game either. There needs to be some room for surprises. Starting with sorting and your bus design, I have some thoughts on how you can go about this without breaking out in a Bacchus. In this example here, I recently finished setting up the outputs to this humongous modular refinery that I built for experimentation with alternate recipes. I wanted it to be completely powered by belts, so early on I set up some framework across the desert to ensure that I would have plenty of clearance to deal with whatever amount of output I would end up with. I copied my starting factory in the area and mirrored the structure, aligned with the directions of the game, north, south, east, and west. When building, I try to clip as little as possible and try not to spend too much time freeforming extensive structures. This especially applies to my bus, road, and train setup. Free placing pieces on repeatable megastructures add to the time sink in my opinion, which is fine, but I can do that later once the foundations are placed and time permits. Concerning sorting, I knew that I didn't want to sort all of the output lines here inside the structure when I built it. So, that is why I have the small bridges connecting the central structure to the outer ones. I knew I would run a bus in these areas eventually. I had decided that I would merge multiple building styles into one, as I do in other games. One building style is organic and encourages ad hoc planning. Another is commitment to shape. And the last style is commitment to production. I have noticed over time that many gamers out there build in one of these three ways. I hope that I describe these techniques well enough. Further, I have noticed that when folks I build with try to combine aspects for more than one of these three styles, it often doesn't go very well. That's where I come in. I incorporate all three, have learned to incorporate all three that is, and have found my builder's mark or thumbprint. In Satisfactory, your main roads should contain your bus lines, both physical and liquid. By the way, timestamps are of course in the video description. Beyond just being efficient in terms of time and resources, it is a perfect opportunity to bring everything with you to your next working area or project. In order to do this organically and be able to accommodate expansion, I have some general tips. To plan for expansion, simply take the time to build your roads multiple foundations wide. I like to go with five foundations, but I could easily condense and deal with a three foundation wide central road, but I would still probably hang belts on the sides of that road. This allows you to create a workflow for your roads, bringing everything with you and being able to turn your brain off and watch your favorite TV show or listen to some music while you lay down the road to your next location. Maintain your commitment to shape, or the second building style. Keep things angular. You can freeform and smooth things out later. If you discover a new spot you want and you think to yourself, wouldn't that be cool if I could build a power plant actually at the water level? Or, wouldn't it be awesome to see a skyscraper factory in this spot? You are in the right frame of mind for that build style. Commit to it and get to it. Lastly concerning roads, build your initial road system high as shown with the roads in here today. You may be wondering how this ties into the third building style, a commitment to production, as it seems more like a commitment to shape. Allow me to explain. Building high allows you to easily identify bottlenecks. It also saves on time and resources. We've talked about this in previous videos. You, as the player, are the single most important piece of the production chain, not just for your factories, but for the architecture that contains them. 
My point is, if you build high, you will spend less time fighting through the wilderness and cutting down trees, and also are likely altering your building methods as you explore different terrain, lay down tracks, and defend against malicious spawns. Once you have your literal highway around your immediate factory, you don't have to immediately go create a loop around the map either. Tackle it in phases. Once you have an established, general, top-level road system, you can then split off and go enjoy the game on the ground for as long as you enjoy to do so. You will see that I often use a top-down approach when building, even when it comes to sorting or distributing resources. That brings us to the design of your bus. Your bus should contain everything you need to function and should have open space on either side. This area here reminds me of the matrix code for some reason. Using this area as an example, you can see that I committed early on to setting up a bus across this biome, and I still have plenty of room for expansion. High volume items should have their own belts. Super high volume items should, as a general rule, be near the location they are needed. Screws would be a good example. As a personal rule, I deal with screws and concrete locally, almost always. More things I'd have to take with me slows down the expansion process. Stacking your conveyor lines is fine, but I recommend having plenty of space between them because the conveyor elevators actually work perfectly with this. No freeform placement required, which is a bonus. The effect and efficiency you get here is tremendous, and by ensuring that you have a little bit of space between your conveyor stacks, like here, as opposed to my initial baby bus line for my tier 1 through 8 factory over here, is a huge benefit. I am able to split off whenever and however I need to. This can become as complicated or stay as simple as you like, but hopefully the simplicity of this is appealing to you. If you would like to also include a smart belt, I would do it once all the belts and pipes are in place. Typically, when I use a smart belt, which come in a variety of forms and designs from various games I've played, I use them to return anything not used back to a recycling, sorting, and or storage node. This is a nice addition, but not required. Instead of going with the smart belt in this setup here, I chose to shut down my starter factory and leave everything there. It was designed for space elevator tier progression, and it doesn't take up much space, so I'll keep it as an artifact of simpler times. However, all of these ingots coming from the refinery are being partially or completely sunk until the time they are needed. I can use lower tier belts to slow down the sinking process or shut it off completely, as I need each belt in the future. So, I have a recycling system at the front of my bus somewhat, instead of at the end. For example, I knew I wanted to create a sorting and troubleshooting area for the refinery close by, so that I could react quicker. I had already committed to the shape of this building, it was completed long before I ever even powered up this factory. Walls and foundations are cheap, don't be afraid to take a break from the numbers and just build a structure now and then. I found that with this game, Having floors that are at least 11 to 13 tiles wide and about 15 to 20 tiles long seems to mesh well with the game's balance concerning its facilities and factory bits. I proved this three times already with the same building. The first one was my first base. The second one was for some specific items to feed the power plant which powers this refinery. And the third over here is simply for troubleshooting and refinery diagnostics. Every time, Whatever I needed to accomplish fit within the structure, with very little aesthetic compromises and no production compromises in my opinion. Again, this general sizing works for me, go with what works best for you. It is seamlessly incorporated with my largest bus I have created to date, and won't limit the flow of material at all. Moving on, space your conveyor lines apart just a tad, and try not to stack them too high if you can avoid it. This is why I attach my lines to the outside of my road so I can always expand outwards if needed. I don't have to worry about clipping because I know I have clearance on both sides, because I build my main highway angular and straightforward. Doing this allows you to willingly enter time sinks of freestyle building as you want to, not because you built your road on the ground and have no other choice. Let's switch gears over to dependable train hub placement. The simplest way I can describe how to place my train hub is that it follows the same rules as the rest of my building method. Build your train stations as high as you can handle or be happy with for the scenario and location you are working with. 
The orange arrow for your train direction is simple enough. I don't want to get too far into the weeds of the basic mechanics or fundamentals here. There are already plenty of handy guides on YouTube for that. What I can recommend is to use 1 meter and 2 meter ramp slopes. Power flows through the rails, so it's kind of like a powered bus, which is why I love them. And for placement, I recommend finding a very large, flat area to build with, and make sure you leave space under, above, or around your main platform for your stations for loading, last minute sorting, and storage. We should always plan for expansion, and also consider making your main hub or large stations along the path that has become known as the loop. This isn't just an easier route to build around the map, no. There are logistical reasons why you would want to keep an eye on this loop while planning your own railways. And in my case, those are also my roads. We won't get into that too deeply. After all, we want to be able to do what we want, when we want. But it's still a good idea to have enough working knowledge to make things easier on yourself and maximize your productivity for your playtime and make more room for fun. I try not to do too many crazy turns and again, I avoid freeform placements while building my train tracks so that I can not only save time, but resources and have a dependable grid. At least, a dependable start for now. Once I get these items transported to my train station, that will be it for all of these lines. They will be stored in a secondary buffer and piped directly into the train systems one at a time as needed. The rail line at that point will then become my bus for these items, so I don't end up with hundreds of kilometer spanning belts. I'd rather plan just enough ahead to always build in a style that doesn't slow down my game performance, or does it as slowly as possible. Currently, I have no issues and am still able to upload videos in 4K 60 frames, so I'm very happy to find that the game isn't buckling just when I'm getting started on this save for you guys. A final note on your roads, belts, trains, all of it. Maybe consider having a height limit and a tentative width limit for your line. Using belts as an example, I personally think that anything more than 12 or 16 belts stacked vertically becomes unwieldy and unsightly. But to each his own, all of my perspectives and strategies are just that. But hopefully something in this video today helps you in your playthrough. Wrapping up then, whether you use single, double lines, loop systems, or a hybrid system, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you do your best to use trains when it makes sense and keep them off the ground if possible. This is where things get a little more informal. Thank you for sticking around. You may have noticed in the video today that I didn't get into trucks as an option for transportation. That's because I don't plan to use them until much later once my surface level routes are established. But for now, I simply don't need them. Nothing against them or anything like that. But I love the idea of pushing power and items down a train line, or a standard road with power lines and conveyor belts on each side. I like to use the trucks for transportation at ground level, when my factory cart can't cut it. So I'll use them for high demand, low volume, higher tier items, and unique surface travel scenarios to populate my save. That way, there will be a node of transportation nearby or a taxi cab in case I get stranded from lack of planning. I'm sure it's obvious by now, but one of my favorite things to do is to build. In Satisfactory, I like the challenge of harvesting all of the uranium nodes, building up to that, and then using that power for in-game expansion. If you would like a more detailed, step-by-step -step guide, please let me know. For now, this is just how the information naturally flows. Not too simple where I'm regurgitating handy guides that already live here on YouTube, but not too complicated where a casual player gets nothing from my discussions or content. Also, as always, I have a question for you. What is your main building style that I described today? Do you naturally lean more towards organic ad hoc planning? Or commitment to a shape or design? Or are you focused solely on production? Let us know in the comments down low. I respond to every comment. I'm not a large channel. I want to share my love for games with you. And if I can provide some insights that help you maximize your time and fun, that means the world to me. Even if I just help you avoid one costly or timely mistake, or recommend something that enhances your gaming, I look forward to continuing this pattern of regular content, so please check in from time to time when you can and chat with me. Let's get to where we're going next. Well, in the immediate future, all of this is being sent way up there to the top of that plateau above the waterfall in order to be distributed for infrastructure and expansion. I am also looking forward to getting my main base area decorated. At least, a quick pass, not necessarily the final version. I could decorate a single structure indefinitely, so I'll try not to get too caught up in that. 
I'm definitely also looking forward to this phase and taking a short breath from all of the tedious nuclear and refinery network development. I'm not sure how deep I'll get into clipping structures and tricking the game to build the way I want it to. It usually looks great for a few months in other games, but an update will break the structure or the save file entirely. For this playthrough, I wanted to make it as update friendly as possible so that I could do videos for you on this save for a long, long time. So, if they change trains, drones, trucks, or even add other vehicles, at least I know I have some stuff on the good old conveyor belt. When there is an update with another speed, I just upgrade the belt lines if necessary and recalculate. Now that we have enough stuff to play with, I want trains. I've earned them, it's overdue, also drones, so yeah, drones, trains, moving out and building across the map. That's what's coming next. I hope you come back for some more tutorials, perspectives, tips, HD time lapses and footage that eat up all of my mini, mini solid state drives. That does it for today's video. If you liked today's video and would like to see more satisfactory content, be sure to check out my channel for more videos for something that may pique your interest. If you would like to see more satisfactory, you will definitely find more content in your niche here. And be sure to check out the link on the top of the screen, more is on the way. The community is steadily growing, which is great. And I I need your help to continue creating a community that showcases what time, patience, and a little bit of creativity, industrialism, and automation can produce, both for gaming entertainment and for brain food. Lastly, if you made it this far in the video and you liked my content, please leave a like, subscribe if you think I earned it, and share this video with friends. The content is going to keep coming either way, but I sure would like to reach more people with positive content. It really is that simple. Oh, and please check out my Reddit page, that's where I'm posting the latest info on upcoming stuff for the time being. All links will always be in the description of every video. The fried industry needs you. Stay fresh, stay effective, and stay you.